Throughout the existence of skateboarding, there have been a lot of controversial skaters. Skaters like Antoine Dixon. She says, why am I looking so good? <laughs> Tony Alva. Even Nyjah Houston. But despite their individual controversies, they are still highly respected and loved within the skateboarding community. With that being said, there aren't a lot of notable skaters that have found themselves in so much controversy that they are not only greatly disliked by everybody in skateboarding, but they are constantly disrespected and made fun of in front of their face. And that person I'm talking about could be no one other than Steve Barra. So in this video, I decided to take a deeper look and find out why do skaters hate Steve Barra? And well, I found a lot. Honestly, I could make a Netflix series on this guy. But in today's video, I'll just be covering the biggest things that he's done to make himself hated within the skateboarding community. And to get all of you that don't know anything about Steve Barrett up to speed, well, let me just do a mini skate stories within this video. So, Steve Barrett was born on May 10th, 1973 in Omaha, Nebraska. Steve claims that when he was growing up, he was considered poor because his family didn't have a phone. He was bullied for skateboarding, struggled in school, and was the kid that everybody assumed was a lost cause. In his own words, of course, he said this himself about himself. And you'll see why I'm saying this later in the video, as you'll see that Steve has a love for dramatic statements. So if Steve Barrett pretty much being a loner or an outcast during school, he had a whole lot of time on his hands to just go skateboard, and that's what he did, and he eventually got pretty good at it, good enough for him to get a sponsor by Blockhead. And then not too long after that, he left them to skate for 101, and then after 101, he left to join Tony Hawk and Birdhouse. I'm not sure exactly how this ended up happening, but when he was 18, Steve Barra started to live with Tony Hawk, and Tony Hawk was pretty much his mentor and giving him guidance as he was continuing his journey in skateboarding. Several months later, he left Birdhouse to join the foundation team, and then he left them to join Birdhouse again, and then he left it again to join Alien Workshop. I know, a whole lot of switching going on. Roughly around the time that Steve joined Alien Workshop, he did two things that would haunt him to this day and be the main reason for people hating on him. Firstly, he joined the church that everybody joins when you're a professional skateboarder. Um, you guessed it, Scientology. He seems to have joined because his wife at the time was a Scientology celebrity, whatever that means. And today it's pretty unclear if Steve Barrett is still a part of Scientology like he used to be and still doing all that Scientology stuff which just seems to be donating an obscene amount of money to the church. So yeah, I'm not gonna bother going in depth on Scientology or why it's bad or why people don't like it because there's plenty of other videos out there like that. So if you wanna watch it, go ahead. I don't care. Anyway, moving on to the important thing of what actually caused people to really hate him. And a few years after he completed his Scientology courses and became clear or whatever they say, he did something that would turn him from being known as the pro skateboarder Steve Barra to the fake spots Steve Barra. In 2005, Steve Barra was featured in a DVS shoes video called Skate More. This would undoubtedly mark the beginning of hate for Steve Barra. Now to most people, when they watch Barra's part, nothing would really stand out. It just seems like a typical skate video of him doing tricks, it looks pretty smooth. But wait, pause that right there. Enhance. Why are those bricks shiny? Bricks aren't supposed to be shiny, right? Well, they aren't. And in fact, those aren't bricks. That is a box with a metal coping on it painted like bricks. So it would be easier for Barra to do his tricks on it. Now you might think, why would people be mad about him skating something that's not actually made out of brick? Well, let me tell you real quick. Skating brick is a whole lot harder than skating a metal coping on concrete or rough surfaces in general, even if you wax it a ton, it is still going to be relatively rough to skate and it's going to be hard to do tricks on. Versus on a metal coping, it's going to be easy to slide on it already, but if you wax it up, it's going to be even easier and it's just super smooth. It's There's no bumps in it. There's nothing that's going to throw you off your balance. It's a perfect surface to skate on. Anyway, the big problem that a lot of skaters solved this and the reason they started hating him was because Bear was trying to pass it off as a genuine street part when it wasn't a street part because in a street part, everything that you skate should be naturally out there in the streets and it should not be made for skating. Anyway, Barra seems to have never really fully recovered from this, even to this day, as almost 16 years later, it is still brought up regularly and he still has to, I guess, defend himself and the reason that he did it. Anyway, in 2007, when Steve Barra and Eric Costin decided to found the Barracks, it seemed like a step in the right direction for Barra. He built a very exclusive skate park and the only way to get inside of it was to be invited by the Barracks themselves. This caused the Barracks to become one of the most iconic skate parks 
in skateboarding, period. There's probably more footage from there than almost any other spot in the world. But the barracks didn't last like this forever, and it started to really fall apart around 2016. And that was when Steve Barrett decided to go live on his barracks Instagram page account and just go on a massive rant about everything that's been on his mind since that fake skate spots thing happened. His giant rant or meltdown or whatever you want to call it lasted about 30 minutes and it ranged from topics of him saying that nobody is core except for me to him talking shit about DC being too mainstream and criticizing some of the business moves that they made recently. Now while the rant may have been a highlight, Steve Bear was doing something in the background that would not only hurt his reputation but also hurt the brand image of the barracks. To make a long story short, the barracks was originally the skate park, right? Then eventually when social media came around, he made an Instagram page for it. Great. At first, the Instagram page just had very core skaters on it, very good tricks, stuff that would blow your mind, you know? Then, all of a sudden, around 2015, 2016, the barracks started posting a lot of just garbage on their Instagram page. They started posting, like, girls doing mob kickflips, and they're just there because they're hot, and they get millions of views just because they're hot. Their tricks aren't even that good. And then he also had those people come and skate at the barracks, which should have been like a mecca of skateboarding. It should have been like a very holy skate park that nobody could really get into unless you were elite. And that's just not the case anymore. Almost anybody can get in. And when skaters obviously got upset because this is not worth a barracks post, Steve would get into massive comment arguments by responding with his literal like barracks account and he would either like delete comments or he would disable them and he would he would just clash the community of skateboarding while the entire time he was portraying this holier than thou demeanor in response to criticism this caused a lot of people to stop calling Steve Barra Steve Barra and start calling him Simp Barra because he would defend all of these mediocre skater girls by saying that they're just as good as the guys when it's just not they don't deserve to be on the barracks if they aren't good and the girls that actually are good seem to get posted less than the girls that are mediocre at best. More recently with the barracks, a lot of people are hating on it because of the redesign that they made by pretty much having tons of advertisers posted all over their walls and even on the floor. Like, they have like minion stuff. Like, why do you have minion stuff in skateboarding? Like, I thought minions were limited to like Facebook moms, but I guess they're now into skateboarding too. Great. But what people were most upset about was the giant Karayuma poster that was just plastered on like the main wall at the barracks. Now, Karayuma has without a doubt been the most hated brand to enter skateboarding since the beginning of Adidas and Nike trying to get their way into skateboarding. Part of that is skaters hating on new things, but a bigger part of that is that their logo is plastered literally everywhere that Barra has touched. And on top of that, they seem to have a massive marketing budget towards YouTubers, so it's just plastered all over YouTube as well. What it really comes down to is that Karayuma is marketing towards kids and not skaters. Linking back to just people hating on Barra, he would always preach about supporting local skate shops and small skate companies and to keep skateboarding core, guys. Let's keep skateboarding core, all right? Everybody. <coughs> <coughs> Steve Barry is all about keeping skateboarding core until that money gets involved. Then he goes and paints a giant Karayuma poster at the barracks. Oh, and I almost forgot to say, he sold half of the barracks to Hypebeast. This is probably the most controversial move that he has done so far. And obviously people are not gonna like that. If that's not selling out, then I literally don't know what is. A lot of people put the blame on Barra for the state that the barracks is in today. And whether he has had a big of a role in it, as people seem to give him credit for or not, it's clear that the barracks brand is not anywhere close to as it was 10 years ago, when it was the most core exclusive skate park that the best skaters only got invited to. Whereas now there's ads filling up every wall and there's random TikTokers and just random influencers that get invited to skate there. The barracks has clearly lost the prestige that it once had. So to bring up the mood a little bit, let me just show you one of my favorite things that I found while researching about Barra. Um, and this is when he cried when he learned that Tony Hawk smoked pot. Tony smoked pot one night when we were on at a demo somewhere. And then Steve Barra came back to the room and because he found out and he was crying. Oh, I I <laughs> he was crying. God forbid that I did that one night on our six week tour. <laughs> Now, despite the barracks and everything that he's done already, Steve Barra just seems to have an affinity for getting into fights with people over the internet. Or even, in fact, in real life. Just like what happened recently at Tampa Pro. Long story short, somebody brought in a poster of Jagger Eaton twisting his nipples. Now, it was obviously a joke, right? 
He is. It's it's, it's, it's a stupid joke. Not, not gonna lie. It, it's a stupid joke, but it's a joke at the end of the day. It shouldn't be taken seriously. But Steve Barra completely flipped out. He did not like this poster at all. He kicked out the kid that had the poster. He got in an argument with him outside. He got in an argument later on social media. He posted a giant rant. He said that the kid was trying to humiliate Jagger Eaton when the kid that was doing that was like, I don't know, the same age as Jagger Eaton and Jagger Eaton's like a bronze medalist and this kid's just some nobody with a poster. I'm, I'm not sure how he was trying to exactly embarrass him. It's just a funny poster. Anyway, whether you agree with what Steve Barry did or not, it's just kind of funny how much he overreacted over this. Like, he made it into such a big deal when it could have been handled way better. At the end of the day, most of Steve Barry's shortcomings come down to him not being able to handle criticism like an adult. Despite him being almost 50, he still has arguments over the internet as if he's some 15 year old with too much time on their hands. And while I personally don't have any hatred in my heart for Steve Barra, although I think he's a bit of a goofy guy and I think he's done some goofy things, I don't hate him. And I don't think any of you should either. At the end of the day, we're all human, we all make mistakes, and I can see why he's made fun of so much, because he has an easy target, and if you make fun of him, you're probably gonna get a big reaction out of it too, so it's just kind of gratifying. I don't agree with the way that he runs his businesses, I don't agree with the way that he runs the barracks, or any of the choices that he made with the barracks, I think those are totally stupid. At the end of the day, it is up to the skaters whether to accept the barracks as it is, or to make fun of it and call it kooky and call Steve Barra a kook or everybody else that goes there a kook. And if Steve Barra keeps up this kind of attitude towards the barracks and the way that he's running businesses, with him not taking any of that criticism to make some positive changes, it is only a matter of time before his skaters make a new barracks that is actually cool for skaters. Anyway, hopefully now you understand a little bit more about why people hate Steve Barra so much. And I also wanted to give a huge shout out to Gifted Hater. His videos on Steve Barrett are what inspired me to make this one. And although he probably hates my channel, I personally love his. I think he has really good commentary and it's pretty funny. So I suggest that you guys check out his videos if you want to go a little bit deeper in the bear rabbit hole and see all the other skateboarding drama that he has made for himself. I'll, I'll put a link to his channel down below in the description. Anyway, that is all I have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.